Don't stop praising him, amen. I choose to believe God can do great things. Thank you so much, music department. Um, thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, those that are watching on Facebook, on our website, YouTube. We thank you for tuning in, and we thank you, amen, for choosing to believe that God can do great things. I want to share a bit of information with our um, congregation at New Harvest Church. We have lost a faithful soldier, um, Deacon Ronald Hill. Amen. And I'm asking the church to pray um, for his wife, um, Reverend Margaret Hill, his brother Stacy, um, as we go through this valley of the shadow of death. I preached about a seat on last Sunday, and I can say without reservations, he never chased the seat. He always chased serving others. And we thank God for his service, his commitment. He was a faithful and loyal brother. Wasn't concerned about a title. He always had the towel. Amen. He was working before he got the seat, and he worked even harder in the seat. But his seat will be missed here in this place and we're asking um, those that are hearing me not to go to the house. Amen. If you want to um, come see her, come to the church today. She will be here. Um, we're going to have um, lunch and possibly dinner with her today. But we don't want everyone piling up in her house. Amen. We know what times we're living in. And we got to be wise and safe. So she will be here today. Amen. And possibly all through the week. So just come to the church. If you want to love on her, she's going to need it. But nobody loved her like God and her husband. Can I say that again? Nobody loved her like her God and her husband. Amen. Let's get to Bibleville. Um, First Peter chapter 1. And we thank all of those that came out on yesterday um, to help me serve that family. Um, we thank you for your service. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 8 will be our targeted um, text. First Peter, chapter 1, 3 through 8. Now, if I don't shout, you'll do a good job. I'm, I'm grieving as well. Amen? So pray for me. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith until salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Look what verse 7 says, that the trial of your faith, being more precious than gold, than of gold that perishes, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom thou now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm going to stop there. Um, verses 3 through 8. First Peter chapter 1, I want to share with you by way of subject, faith that exceeds our struggles. Faith that exceeds our struggles. I solicit your prayers, please. Brothers and sisters, I think by now we know that life can change in a blinking of an eye. Think we know by now that we can't take life for granted. 
We can't move as if we always will have tomorrow. I was performing a wedding yesterday, and in the midst of performing the wedding, I received a call in reference to our dearly beloved Deacon Ronald Hill. And I, and I pondered that because you can go from a wedding celebration. You can go from being in a happy moment and in the blink of an eye, you can switch scenes from a happy moment to a horrific moment. And that's how life works. Amen. Amen. One, one day you're up and the next day you're down. And sometimes it's the same day you can be up in the same day you can be down. What I'm trying to share with you, that life is full of struggles. Everybody say struggles. But our faith, watch this now, need to outrun our struggles. Preach black man. I, I, you got to have faith, amen, that if your struggles, amen, go a mile, your faith ought to go a mile and a half. Preach black man. If your struggles go three miles, your faith shall always exceed your struggles because if not, amen, your struggles will cause you to doubt God. Your struggles will cause you to doubt his providence. Your struggle will cause you to doubt that he's a way maker, that he's a bridge over troubled water, that he's a battle axe in a time of a battle, that, y'all, I wish I had some help in here, that your struggles will cause you to doubt. We all have struggles, but we don't have to allow our struggles and doubts and fears to dictate our spiritual lives. Oh, preach black man. I would, I would have loved to take the day off. Amen. Amen. But my faith says, amen. I wish I had a witness here. I, I would have loved to just sit and, and just grieve and mourn. But my faith says to me, troubles don't last always. My, my faith says we're just pilgrims traveling through a barren land. My faith says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what my faith says, and my faith will always exceed my struggles because if not, many of us will throw in the towel. Many of us will abandon our posts when our faith don't exceed our struggles. I, I, only got, I only got two points for you. I only got two points. I want to talk about the hope of the believer and the help for the believer. Preach, man. The hope for the believer and the help for the believer. Let me say it again. The hope of the believer and the help for the believer. When all else appeared to be gone, Peter reminds us that we lose some stuff but never lose your faith and your hope. When all else appeared to be gone and going wrong, Peter reminds us that hope is not lost. Every believer enjoys a lively hope in Christ. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got three points in, in this, the hope of the believer. I want to talk about the source, the significance, and the security. Preach, man. Here's the source, verse 3. Verse 3, I'm in verse 3. They told me to stay in the book. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the source. Somebody shout source. I'm, I'm in the A clause. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless here. Peter reminds them they are never alone in the journey. They were not born of corruptible seed, but of the Lord through the righteousness in Christ. Y'all don't know when to shout. God has graciously provided for their needs, our needs, their redemption, our redemption through the sacrifice of his son. See, we like to shout over new houses. We like to shout over new cars. We like to shout over new relationships. But we're going to shout that Jesus laid down his life for us. And that's the source of our hope. He loved them enough to allow his only begotten son to die in our place. Such love was not to be marginalized are forgotten. Can you tell somebody, don't forget what God done for you? 
Oh, I wish I had a witness. I know we're going through struggles. We're going through a lot. But don't let what you go through, amen, allow you to marginalize what God has done for you. That's our problem. We get so caught up in what we caught up in, we forget the source. We, we hook on resources and forget the source. Your job is a resource. Your money is a resource. But the source has always been God. Can I get a witness in the building? They were loved and kept of God eternal by an eternal omnipotent God. He knew where they were in the journey. Okay, y'all didn't hear me. He knows where we are in this journey. And he was more than able to provide all we need to endure the journey. Oh, y'all want me to preach it and teach it. He knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly what we're going through, and he, he's able to provide the necessary stamina to get us through. Amen. I, I, I don't like folk that just wimp out and weak out. You don't know how much power you have. You, don't, you have to tap into the source and realize your hope is in the source, not in your resources. Some of us got more hope in the resources than we do in the source. I might as well just go ahead and preach it. He knew where they were in the journey, and he was more than able to provide all they needed to endure. I come by to let you know this morning, he going to give you what it takes to endure. Their hope wasn't in the abilities or policies of men, but in Christ Jesus, their Savior. And can I make it 2020? My hope is ain't nothing. My hope ain't in Biden. My hope is not in Trump. My hope is not in legislation or policies. My hope is in God. Because I wish I had a witness here. God, amen, can take any man's heart and put it in his hand and turn it any which way he wants. Can I say that? Can I say that again? Their hope wasn't in abilities or policies of men, but in Christ Jesus, their Savior and Lord. Anyway, the Romans may have threatened them and even martyred them, but even in death, hope remained. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. We would do well to remember the source of our hope. We serve a true and living God. Our hope is not in those around us. The policies and the legislation of governments or the resources obtained through Wall Street. Our hope is not in the stock market. When it appears all hope has been removed, remember God is still there. I just go ahead and preach to myself. Amen. When everything falls apart, God is still there. I wish I had some believers, amen, can put that in Facebook. God is still there. God is still. Can I help you remember? God is still there. He didn't leave you. You left him. We serve a God. When it appears all hope has been removed, God is still there. It wasn't given by earthly means. And nothing we face in life can remove or diminish our hope. You know the older saints used to say, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it. See, see, some of y'all let the world take it because you never had it. <laughs> When you have, when you're tapped into the source, there's some joy that the world can't take because it did not come from the world. The world can only take what the world has given, but the world can't take nothing that God has blessed us with. Amen. Ephesians 3 and 20 say, now unto him that is able, y'all know it, to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we can act or think according to the dunamis power that worketh on the inside of you. Touch some, don't touch them. Look at somebody and tell them, stay plugged in. Yeah, you got to stay plugged into the source. That's the source, but here's the significance. Here's the significance of our hope. The B clause, the B clause, the B clause says, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Preach, man. Their hope wasn't temporal or fickle. It was lasting. It was enduring. I know I'm preaching to the choir. It was eternal. You can't cut on hope and cut off hope. 
That's fickle. Y'all ain't helping me. If you're going to hope, hope. If you're going to worry, worry. But you can't do them both at the same time. Pick what you're going to do. Amen. If you're going to hope, hope. If you're going to have faith, amen, that exceeds your struggle, stick with faith. But if you're going if you're going to embrace fear, you can't embrace fear with faith. Fear allows us to turn our back on God. Faith allows us to turn our backs on our struggles. Preach man. You can't fear and have faith at the same time. You're fickle. You're temporal. But if you really know who your source is, you know how significant. Woo. Woo. Every believer had experienced the abundant mercies of God. Being born again in Christ, risen in a lively hope, he provides eternal life. Christ had faced death at the hands of the Romans. He gave his life on Calvary for the sin of the world. They placed his lifeless body in a tomb and rolled the stone in front of the entrance. For his followers, it appeared hope was buried in the grave. But three days later, <laughs> y'all like to wait the Easter to say three days later. I'm going to say it today. But three days later, Amen. Life came forth triumphantly. Christ had faced death and he had conquered it alone with the grave. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The grave is not the final resting place. There's hope. Their hope wasn't in one who had been, but their hope is in one who has risen. Can I say that one more time? Their hope wasn't in one that has been, but their hope was in one that has risen, who provides eternal life for all who come to him by faith. We come this far by faith. Leaning. Leaning on. Okay, okay. That's the source. That's the significance. Here's the security. I, I, if that didn't get you, verse 5 going to get you. Who are kept. By the power of God. Can you look at somebody? I know we did this a couple of weeks ago. Look at somebody and say, this is what kept looked like. No, no, they didn't believe it. Look at somebody and say, this is what kept looked like. I, 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 I should have lost my mind. I, I should have gave up a long time ago. I should be in an insane asylum, but this is what kept look like. I, I, I don't have a lot of money, a lot of resources, but this is what kept look like because when I can't keep myself, God keeps me. When I don't do the right things, God keeps me. I wish I had a witness there. When my money is funny and my change is strange, God still puts food on the table we're kept that's the security who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last day if anything was certain in the lives of the early believer it was uncertainty they never knew what a day would bring forth much like 2020 or what type of struggles they would be called on to endure. See, y'all don't know how blessed we are to practice religious freedom. Some of y'all got to be pumped and primed, but people was being killed just for calling on the name of Jesus. And, 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 and nobody's trying to kill you for calling on the name of Jesus, and you still won't call on the name of Jesus. You call on any other name but the name of Jesus. But my Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess at that name. In the midst of uncertainty, Peter reminds them of a very secure future. In fact, it was so secure that it was unchangeable. They have been saved by the grace of God, placed within the body of Christ, and they were slated for heaven. They may not have realized it yet, but they were as good as they would ever be. Listen, listen, I know y'all don't subscribe to some of my teaching, but I can endure it down here because I know where I'm going. Okay, let me, let me slow down. I don't have to lose my mind down here. 
because I know where I'm, where I'm going. I don't have to be at my wit's end because my future is secure. I can deal with the suffering now because the glory that, can be, that will be revealed later is going to be well. I, okay, 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 okay. Let, come here, come here, women. Some, some of me women had some children, amen, and labor was painful, amen, and all that. I mean, it was, it was struggles, it was pain, it was sweat, even tears. Some, some women even cussed the baby daddy or the husband out, amen. But, but once that baby was put in their arms, they forgot all about the struggle. They forgot all about the, uh, uh, the pain. They forgot. Y'all ain't helping me because that bundle of joy will make you forget what you just went through. I'm talking to somebody. What you're going through right now, it's going to all be worth it one day. What you're going through right now, it ain't going to be compared to what God is trying to give you. He didn't realize it. But like Paul, he said to live is Christ. In the dice game, when their race on the earth was complete, they would enter the presence of the Lord to never leave it. Most of us probably realize this fundamental truth, but it does us good to be reminded from time to time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're slated for heaven. Our lives here will not last forever. Joshua said it this way, I must go the way of the earth. We all must go the way of the earth. Death is coming to each of, uh, each of us, but that will not be the final moment of our existence. I feel better already. I feel better already. I say death will not be your final moment of existence. You're going to take off immortality. <laughs> Mortality and put on immortality. Can, can I get a witness here? Death is coming to each of us. We too are kept by the power of God. Can somebody shout, I'm kept by the power of God. We're simply waiting for the time to make the transition from this life into the next. If you are saved and you are sanctified and if you're Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, I got some good news for you. You're ready to be accepted of the Lord in heaven. Receiving Christ by faith is all God requires. Can I get a witness here? 1 John 3 and 2 say, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We talked about the hope of the believer, the source, the significance, the security. But let's not hold you too long. Let's talk about the help for the believer. Anybody need some help? Verse 6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. In the help for the believer, I want to talk about our perspective our potential, our patience. That's pretty preacher. The help for the believer. Peter reminds them that along with their hope in the Lord, there is help from the Lord. <laughs> when you have hope in the Lord, you have help from the Lord. Can I say it one more time? When you have hope in the Lord, you have help from the Lord. He's a present help. I said it wrong. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Some, somebody say, thank God for help. But see, your help is predicated on your perspective. Preach, man. Some of us look at life wrong. Some of us look at things wrong. I like David because when David saw the giant and everybody say the giant was too big to hit, David said, no, he ain't too big to hit. He's too big to miss. Your outlook preach man, determines your outcome. And when you have a pessimistic or negative outlook, you will not, amen, even, amen, how can I see this? You will not even acknowledge the help from God. Because when you got the wrong mindset, amen, some help to us seems like hindrance. Preach black man. When you got the right 
mindset. You know all your help comes from the Lord. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, knowing all my help comes from the Lord. Your perspective, your perspective, Peter remind them to keep a proper perspective while facing adversity. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. But he said, wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season, somebody shout season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. They may endure heaviness through various trials and temptations. And when those times came, they were encouraged to look at them through the lens of faith. That's why I stand here every Sunday morning. I'm trying to change your eyewear. Because some of you, amen, when you go through the manifold temptations, you're looking at it from a carnal lens. And God is telling me to tell you, look at it from a faith lens. Uh, because we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Some of y'all got 2020 vision. But when it comes to faith, you can't see a bond. I'm going to say it again. Some of you could go to the eye doctor right now and read the little letters. But if you had a faith eye test, you wouldn't see a bond. That's why I, I, I always commend um, Brother Washington, Minister Washington. He may not have the sight, the natural sight. But oh, when he put on his faith lenses, he can see more than some of us can't see naturally. Because he sees it spiritually. And it's too many times we go through our struggles looking at it naturally. And we're not looking at it spiritually. I, I, I'm going to teach it. Can I teach it? He had spoken to them of their hope of heaven and the anticipation of eternity with Christ should outweigh and overcome any temptation they face. Y'all missed it. Temptations and difficulties will remain as long as you live. I'm going to say it. Okay, let me say it this way. They're not going nowhere. If you think you're going to live on this green planet, trouble-free, trial-free, temptation-free, you already got on the wrong lenses. Your perspective is already jacked up. If you're trying to get a perfect home, a perfect church, and a perfect experience on the job, Houston, we got a problem. But God uses those. We're going to get to the fire. Amen. They'll try. We're going to get there. But God uses things at the house, at the church, and on the job to teach us something. Y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all don't want to hear it. You ain't going to have no perfect home. Why? Because you live there. I'm going to say it one more time. You will never have a perfect home because you live there. My house will never be perfect because I live there. I ain't worried about nobody else in the house. If I live there, it will never be perfect. And we expect perfection from imperfect people. Oh, y'all don't like me now. But here's the help. Your if your perspective is jacked up, your experience will be jacked up. Temptation and difficulty will remain as long as you live. But watch this. But they don't have to defeat us. Can I put it like this? They may live with me, but they don't have to defeat me. <laughs> I may live with it. But with God, I can deal with it. <laughs> oh, I feel an anointing in this place. And until you learn how to deal with what you live with, you will always be miserable. Look what he says. Temptation difficulties will remain as long as we live in this body called flesh. But they don't have to defeat us. We must keep our focus. Can somebody shout focus? Whatever you focus on will determine how you feel. I've been saying this for almost 20 years. If you focus on the wrong thing, it's going to determine how you feel that whole day. Amen. Whatever we focus on, we must keep our focus 
on the Lord, greatly anticipating our eternal future with him. Think on these things. If we can maintain, here it is, a spiritual perspective, that's the key, y'all. Maintaining a spiritual, get out of that carnal stuff. Maintaining a spiritual perspective, focus on the Lord instead of focusing on the problem. We will find great help in our times of need. We focus on problems but won't focus on the problem solver. That's why 1 Peter 4, 13 says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. We talked about the perspective. Uh-oh, here's the potential. The help for the believer, our perspective, but look at our potential in the trial. Verse 7 say, here it is. I, I want to get to this. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Are y'all hearing me? Peter does not insinuate their trials are enjoyable. That's not what he's saying. But he knows that, that they are very beneficial. Trials are not enjoyable, but they are beneficial. I'm going to try one more time. You may not enjoy what you're going through, but if you go through it right, it has the potential, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, amen, to be beneficial if you have the right perspective. If you don't have the right perspective, it will not be beneficial. It will be detrimental. Y'all don't like good teaching. And so the potential of the trial that we go through, it will benefit us if we go through it looking with the right perspective. As they endured the trials of life, God was refining them. I don't know who I'm talking to. You so busy trying to get out the fire, but God wants you in that fire because he's trying to burn some stuff off of you. God wants you to go through some pain and some hurt because there's some stuff that you refuse to let go that he will use that trial and tribulation to burn the impurities off of you. And guess what? It will be beneficial later. You may not see it now. You may not see it now. But he don't want you to be bitter. He wants you to be better. Bitterness brings on pettiness. Y'all ain't helping me. Better brings on prosperity. Here it is. As they endured the trials of life, God was refining them. He, he was removing the doubts and failures while conforming them to the image of Christ. We try to be everything but like Christ. We call ourselves Christians, but we're not Christ-like. We call ourselves disciples, but who are we really following? Y'all got quiet on me. And God will use the trials of life to refine us, to remove the doubts and failures while conforming them and us to the image of Christ. Their faithfulness to Christ in the midst of adversity will strengthen their faith. Some of us don't have strong faith because we don't let Christ in the midst of what we're going through strengthen us. What it really does, it produces more doubt where doubt had already lived. That's why we're jacked up. We're not allowing what we face and what we encounter to strengthen our faith. You ain't going to get no muscles if you don't go to no gym. They're not, you're not going to just lay down in your bed and all of a sudden muscles going to appear. You have to put some strain on a muscle. And the muscle will respond. Watch this. Anytime there's weight on a muscle, anytime there's stress on the muscle, anytime there's some resistance on the muscle, your muscle don't get bitter. Your muscle say, well, I got to get stronger in order to handle the weight that is on me. And so now you develop a muscle to carry what's been weighing you down. Preach black man. And some of us don't have the faith muscle because we refuse to get in the faith gym. We don't want to be refined. We don't want to be developed. That's why some of y'all don't listen to nothing I say. Because development is not your priority. 
You're not trying to be developed. You're not trying to be refined. You're not trying to let the word of God cleanse you. You're not trying to do that. You want to do it your way. I got one question. How is that working for you? Nothing will speak louder to unbelievers. I want, I want y'all to hear this. Nothing will speak louder to an unbeliever than determined faith amongst believers while facing adversity. That's why churches ain't, churches ain't running over. I'm talking about before COVID. Nothing speaks louder to an unbeliever than a determined faith by a believer when going through adversity. How you gonna sell something you ain't even buy? You're selling me Pepsi, but your refrigerator full of Coke. People don't want to hear a sermon no more. They want to see it. They want to see how we respond, how we react when we're in our adversity. And nothing more louder to an unbeliever is a determined faith by a believer. We the worst examples of what faith should look like. We falling out. We spazzing out. We're walking out. We're giving out. We're falling apart. But we go to church every Sunday. Mm -mm -mm. I, want that, I want that to permeate. Marinate. We're the worst ones on the job. I, I, I've been in the workforce. Don't think pastor been passing all his life. The worst people on jobs are the ones they call themselves Christians. They don't want to follow the rules. They don't even come back for lunch on time. They keep so much contention. And we should be the ones setting the example. And then when we lose our minds, the first thing what we say, Pastor, man, I've just been going through a lot. The loudest thing to an unbeliever is a determined faith amongst a believer while facing adversity. How are we selling them Jesus and we ain't buying Jesus? Nothing would speak louder to an unbeliever than determined faith amongst believers when facing adversity. I don't know anyone who enjoys adversity. I don't know anybody that just, oh, I'm just enjoying this struggle. We like things to run smooth with the least amount of resistance possible. However, it is in the storm it's in facing the fires of life that God refines us. Can I say that one more time? It's in the storm. It's facing the fires of life that God refines me, since y'all don't want me to say us. It is then we learn what it is to trust the Lord and become more like him. I just don't understand how we don't look at the life of Jesus and see everything he went through. I don't understand. Even family issues. The Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. He picked 12 disciples and one was the devil. And you falling out because somebody betrayed you. He was betrayed. He was stabbed in the back. He was whipped all night long. He was underappreciated. But we want to be Christians. He was charged for a crime he did not commit. He was killed for me. He was killed for you. But he said these words, Father, forgive them. But we Christians. <laughs> he said, Father, forgive them. 
for they know not what they do. It is then we learn to trust God. Our lives then shine for his glory, bearing witness of his strength and power, not our own. Here's the problem. Some of y'all going to get mad when I say this. We too busy trying to show people how good we are. We forget to show them how good God is. We so busy trying to redeem ourselves, trying to get even, trying to render evil for evil and railing for railing. And people are watching us and say, I thought he or she was a Christian. And so we rather make ourselves feel good at the expense of making God look bad. I'm going to say it one more time. We're so busy trying to lift ourselves until we're putting God down. See, I can take a hit on the cheek and don't have to swing back. That don't make me weak. But I'm trying to show you, I serve a God. Y'all ain't helping me. I serve a God that if I take that hit and turn the other cheek, amen, now that person that hit me either got to be a wicked demon to try to hit me again. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I don't render evil for evil or railing for railing. What I do, I give you the forgiveness that God has given me, and now you'll go home, and that will sear your conscience and say, you know what, let me leave that man alone because that man ain't bothering me. But we got pride. I preached about pride last week. We got so much pride that we got to defend ourselves. Ain't nobody going to get over on me. But the potential is that you can benefit from betrayal. The potential, you can benefit from struggles. The potential is you can benefit from trials and tribulations. Job 23 said it like this. Job 23 10. Y'all know I did a whole series on Job. But he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried me. Talking about being tried. I shall come forth as gold. That's the, poten that's the perspective, the potential. Here it is. Here's the patience. I know y'all hate this word, but here's the patience. Verse 8. I know y'all hate this word. Here's the patience. Whom having not seen, didn't see him, but you loved him. And whom though now ye see him not. Don't see him still, but you still believe. Yet rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Y'all see it? Our perspective, our potential, our patience. Their love for Christ will provide the help they needed to endure whatever they face. My love for God provides me the endurance to deal with what I'm facing. Those who held a spiritual perspective, anxiously awaiting the coming of the Lord, who they didn't see, still haven't saw, but yet they believe. The trials and burdens could never diminish the unspeakable joy that comes from serving the Lord. Many of us don't even get joy from serving. It's really become a burden to some of us. But Pastor, how you how you do this? How you do that? How you can do this? How you can do that? Because I get joy from serving people. And that's what I love about Deacon Ronald Hill. He dealt with the sheep that God entrusted me the way I dealt with them. I didn't never have to pull him off, pull him back, because he enjoyed serving. Watch this. No pun intended. Even the unlovable. And God is looking for people that can serve, not who they like. But you got to be able to serve folk that's unlikable and unlovable. And watch this. And still enjoy doing it. We want to pick and choose who we speak to in the church. Well, you're going to call yourself saved, but you're going to walk by somebody. But they want to come in here and shout and throw microphones and fall out. If you're walking by somebody, stop shouting. Stop falling out. Get your act together. Right. 
We got to serve the Lord with joy. We got to serve others with joy. Margaret, let Pastor, go home, go home, go home. No, I'm, I'm not going home. I'm, I'm serving you tonight with joy. I ain't complaining, I ain't whining, and I ain't tired. Somebody say serving with joy. Those who held spiritual perspective, anxiously awaiting the coming of the Lord, would experience victory. The trials and burdens can never diminish the unspeakable joy that comes from serving the Lord and serving others. One day their faith will end in sight. There was no place to abandon their faith or even consider giving up on the Lord. Did y'all hear me? How you gonna give up on God? The song say, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. He was faithful. He will provide. You better ask Jeremiah in the book of Lamentation. Our God is faithful. New, new mercies every day. Great is thy faithfulness. We will face continued struggles, my brothers and sisters, as they come. I pray that we will be tempered with joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. We too must endure faithful until the end. There is a home awaiting the saved by grace that is beyond description. We will enter the presence of the Lord, the one who died for our sins, purchasing our redemption. We will spend eternity praising him in the glories of heaven. One of these, oh more. It won't be very long. You're going to look for me, and I'll be gone. Going to a place that there's nothing to do but just walk around heaven all day. What could we possibly face in this brief life because how many know life is brief that will even compare with the glories we shall share throughout the endless ages. This brief, brief life can't compare to eternity but churches ain't teaching us to be happy about heaven no more. Patience isn't my, patience may not be your strongest character trait but we should patiently endure for Christ. Patience. Some of us are so impatient. If it don't happen the way we want it to happen, we abandon the mission. We live in a microwavable age. Things weren't torn up overnight, and you can't rebuild it overnight. Patience. Here it is. I got you now. I got all of us. He was patient with you. Okay, let me say it this way. He's still waiting on you. How we can serve a God that's still waiting for us to do a turnaround and we can't wait on others to turn around. Oh, I got you in my yard now. How you want from somebody what you're not willing to give to God? Okay, y'all miss it. Just look at somebody and say, he waiting. He's patiently waiting. Okay. That's why he woke you up this morning, because he's waiting. Not because he condoned what we do. Y'all ain't helping me. He ain't wake me up because he condoned. He woke me up so Greg, I ain't talking about y'all, so Greg can write the things Greg have wrong. Well, some of y'all ain't dead yet. He's giving you another opportunity. This is another day to do what's right. Oh, put that on Facebook. This is another day to do what's right because all those other days you did it wrong. We did it wrong. And so now he gave us this Sunday to get it right. He want our faith to exceed our struggles. The hope of the believer, the help for the believer, the hope, the source, the significance, the security, the help, the perspective, the potential, and patience. I'm sure in my conclusion, everyone here under the sound of my voice have faced hardships and trials. Some of us may 
be in the midst of a raging storm right now. The enemy will have you believe that hope is gone and there is no reason to continue. We have been reminded today that our hope is not in this world, but our hope is in the Lord. We have much to gain in the life to come. He's able to equip us to endure the struggles we face down here. I'm in a struggle right now with the loss of our dearly departed. But he's given me the faith to endure whatever I face. He have encouraged me to believe my faith will always exceed my struggle. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're heading into. But could it be your perspective? The potential of what you're going through and your lack of patience is messing up your help. He wants to help us. But we have the wrong perspective. We don't see that trials are beneficial. We think they are detrimental. You know one of the best words that God have ever told me after I prayed was no. It wasn't yes. It was no. Because some things I really don't need. I just wanted it. And he helped me. It wasn't detrimental to me. He helped me, Wes Lumpkin, when he said no. And if that's your problem, because I know it's our children's problem, they don't know how to react and receive no. They don't throw tantrums because we throw tantrums. We teach without teaching. But if you abide in any home, notice I didn't say a house, because a home is a sheer gift from God. A house, you can purchase that. A home, you can never buy. If you're in a home and your faith is not exceeding your struggles, they should call DCF on you because you are not teaching your children to walk by faith and not by sight. We're setting the next generation up to be religious and not spiritual. I'm gone. We got to do more than just come to church. We have to become the church. In our homes, in this edifice, and even in our places of employment. We have to embody the essence of Christ. Don't make you weak. It really makes you strong. When you can endure the adversities of this world. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your word. We thank you for the hope of the believer. We thank you for the help for the believer. Thank you for the source, the significance, the security. I know I'm kept because I'm kept by you. God, we thank you for the help. Change my perspective. Allow me to see the potential of my adversity and give me patience to wait on the Lord. God, we pray now for those that don't know you and the pardon of their sins. We pray this prayer of salvation. Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life, creating me a clean heart, renewing me the right spirit. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. I believe he got up with all power in his hand. I'm confessing with my mouth and believing my heart that you have raised him from the dead. I'm willing to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we pray. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, you are saved. You are secure. Amen. Just change your perspective and see the potential of every bad thing you experience. It's beneficial. Isn't that good news? 
Isn't that good news? What I'm going through is going to benefit me to be better and not bitter. Life, life is just a vapor. And so let us not waste time on foolishness. Let us occupy until he come. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, praise team, take us out. Never fail.